Hello, welcome or welcome back. As always, my name is Ari, and for the month of January, my goal is to read as many series continuations as I can. At the end of every year, I always have this giant spreadsheet of series that I've started and need to continue with and just haven't managed to get stresses me out. So January is the time that I like truly, truly focus on it. This January, January of 2024, I had 20 series that if I just read one more book in that series, I would either be completely finished with the series or I'd be caught up as far as publications, which means I couldn't read another book in the series even if I wanted to because it hasn't been published yet. So what I decided to do was get a physical copy of as many of those books as I possibly can, wrap it in brown wrapping paper, set it over here behind me, and use a d20, roll it, and that will randomly choose which of those books I read. This is the last of these videos that I'm going to be doing this month. Next week's video is going to be my February TBR. But we're going to do this vlog style where you're going to see me roll the dice and then I'm going to talk about this book. We're going to jump over to that clip, see what I pulled, and then I'm going to come back and talk to you about it. All right, let's go. What 20. I only have four books and I don't want to count to 20, but we're going to do it anyway. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, which I knew I was going to come to this because if you divide 4 by 20, yada, yada, yada. This, I know what this is because it's a mass market paperback. I only have one mass market paperback and this is going to be another book that I'm not going to be very good at reading quickly, but this is... the final book in the Deeds of Paxanarian series. I started and DNF'd the second book in this series like three or four times, so yikes. Oath of Gold, book three of the Deeds of Paxanarian. This series follows Paxanarian or Pax who is a sheep farmer's daughter. The first book's even called she The Sheep Farmer's Daughter. And her father decides that he's going to marry her off to a pig farmer. And she's like, uh, no thank you. And runs away to become a soldier. And then through the books, she becomes somebody even more important without spoiling anything. If you were with me last year, um, I read the first book of the series, absolutely loved it and then DNF'd the second book of the series like three times. It was so hard to get through. About the halfway point it started to get better and I got through it but it was like I don't love this and then this book goes back to being really good. Like it took me a couple of days to read this but it's 500 pages of 1980s fantasy so a little bit of a slower thing to read. Yeah I really like this one. I think I like the first one best. This one was going to be the best read until towards the end of this Pax spends a couple of chapters being tortured for five days and it was really graphic including sexual assault and yeah I it was kind of shocked. I and yeah I wasn't really expecting that but uh, yeah she was literally just tortured for five days on page not my favorite thing to read. So this one ended up being my second favorite because I could have done without those scenes. But in the end, ended up liking the series. So if you're interested, you probably find just reading the first book, but you don't get like the full breadth of who Pax becomes if you don't continue on. And I understand that the second book is a slog to get through, but I think it's worth it in the end. But yeah. All of the covers are really awful, at least the original prints. Like what is that expression? She looks evil. Happy to be done with this.
Alrighty, what is next? 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And we have Page of Dreams by Rebecca Schaefer. Now, interesting. I hate this cover, so I ordered it from the UK with the much better cover. <laughs> I'll probably read this version and then unhaul it afterwards, but it's the dinosaur book. All right, Cage of Dreams. I'm gonna hold up this copy because it's way prettier. This is a duology. The first book is City of Nightmares and this is, this is really <laughs> a city of nightmares. This duology follows a young woman named Ness and she lives in a world where if people fall asleep and have a nightmare, they turn into that nightmare. And as a child, Ness experienced her sister turning into a giant spider and murdering their father and Ness only survived because she hid in a cupboard. So Ness is like legitimately afraid of everything. <laughs> this is the most fearful human being I've ever read, experienced, whatever. But she is literally afraid of everything and she has a very interesting gray morality because she can't get past this fear and it's it's a very selfish kind of I don't care what happens to everybody else as long as I'm safe. And the city that she lives in with all the nightmares and everything it's it's ridiculous. It's like Gotham City from Batman at its like absolute worst with just some with some of the most ridiculous things because you have to admit sometimes nightmares are like legitimately scary and sometimes they're ridiculous like they're they're dinosaurs because people have nightmares and turn into dinosaurs <laughs> this series is very interesting in its approach to like PTSD and fear in general and Ness's like character growth and everything it's ridiculous it doesn't take itself very seriously but it also does a fantastic job at addressing like mental illness, manipulation, fear, friendship. I think it's why Ines is like 19, but it definitely can be enjoyed by adults. I think this duology is a great like palette cleanser. It only took me a few hours to read this book. I think I started at like one and it's six right now so it didn't take me very long to read it at all and I enjoyed my time with it. She ends up in this relationship that is potentially the most healthy thing I've ever seen. It's very friendship forward. There's no smut or anything in this. This is truly like non-romantic at all but it is quite possibly the healthiest relationship I've ever read in a setting that is so absurd that I just didn't expect such healthy relationships and such healthy discussion of some of these topics. So I thought this duology was fantastic, highly recommended to everybody, especially if you just want something quick and something a little bit ridiculous. Let's go to the last two books. For this last roll, what we're gonna do is always as always roll the dice and then if it's an odd number we read this book an even number we read this book just so i don't have to count particularly high 15 odd number we get this book if so i knock everything over i know what this is y'all know what this is the final book in the Skyward Quartet by Brandon Sanderson. 
Defiant book four in the Skyward series. This is the final book, at least of the main series. I know there's like a Skyward Legacy that's written with uh, Brandon Sanderson and J Jancy Patterson. I think I said her name wrong, but uh, they're doing like a, a novella series that follows this. There's also like novellas that come in between these four books that I haven't read yet either, but main series done. It's off of my list. I don't consider novellas in a series as like part of the main series as far as my particular statistics go. I had to look up the synopsis for Skyward because this is so far removed from the first novel and I read the first novel in 2018 so it's been many years. <laughs> I'm not gonna try to do live math, but it's been many years since I've read Skyward and I needed a refresher on what I could say about the series without spoiling anything. This series starts out following the last surviving humans in the universe and they are stuck on this planet that is constantly under attack by alien fighter pilots. Our main character here is Spinza. She's a teenage girl and the daughter of a fighter pilot and she wants to be a fighter pilot but her father was a traitor he turned coward and she's treated really badly by the rest of the people on this planet because her father kind of like completely abandoned his duties as a fighter pilot and they figure her father is a coward and a traitor then genetically she is also going to be a coward and a traitor it's Brandon Sanderson, it's YA, so she's gonna make a bunch of friends along the way, including humans, aliens, a sentient spaceship, all sorts of fun things like that. This series has my absolute favorite like, animal companion of all time. Her name is Doomslug. She is the best. I, I don't know what to tell you other than Doomslug's the best. I should probably get a Doomslug tattoo. That's for another day. This last book was good. It's Brandon Sanderson, so it has a high chance of being very enjoyable for me and for, you know, most people who read it. My only real complaint with this last book is Spencer has an existential crisis like every three pages and it got kind of really annoying really quickly and it's explained like why this is happening later in the book. Uh, even though it explained it doesn't make it less annoying so I could have done without that so it's not five stars because of that but I think if you want sci-fi and you want to try out Brandon Sanderson, you like YA, then this series could be very very good for you. If you just like Brandon Sanderson in general, like his Cosmere and you want to venture outside the Cosmere, I think this is a great way to do it. This is, I, I think the Skyward series is probably one of his more popular series outside of his Cosmere, so if, if that's what you're looking for, sure. Uh, like there's no reason for me not to recommend this to anybody. It's very good, very entertaining, not much of a romance. It, it's definitely a YA level of romance. If you don't really like romance or sex scenes, you're definitely not getting that with Brandon Sanderson. It's a good story, lots of great plot twists, all around entertaining. Four star for me. Like I said, the only thing that really bothered me at all in this was her existential crises becoming annoying fairly quickly. So, yeah. And that leaves us with one book left, so I don't have to roll. It doesn't matter what I roll, I'm still gonna only get this book. But it's Sunday night, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to finish this in time, so we're gonna speed read. And this book, you should know what it is because it's a book that I just recently got. It is Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lens, so Yay! Caught up with publication for Emily Wilde's series. This is Emily Wilde's Mouth of the Other Lens and it just came out like last week. This series follows a Cambridge professor, Emily Wilde. This book takes place in 1910, so the early 20th century, because this happens after the first book, which probably happened in like 1909 but I'm not positive on the dates here. And she is a professor of dryadology, which is the study of fairies at Cambridge, as I've already said. 
This is basically our world, obviously in the early 20th century, so not modern times, but fairies exist. And Emily is one of the best academics in this field of dryadology. So in the first book she's creating an encyclopedia of fairies and she's up in like the northern part of Europe studying uh, along with another professor, his name's Wendell, and there's a bit of a fairy romance going on in there. This book is set in Austria and it's pretty much the same story, like at least the the setup of the story. It's like this event happens and then this event happens and then this event happens and while it's like a different setting and like slightly different outcomes it's still pretty much the same story. If you really love the first book and like exactly how that was told and just want the exact same story in a different setting then you'll probably like this. If you really love that story and kind of wanted something different, you're not really going to get this. Like, I still enjoy this. This is still probably a four star, but I didn't want the exact same setup and plot points. With how the third book has been set up at the end of this book, I think that is going to be a different story. But if this continues to just be like, let's hit this plot point and this plot point and then this plot point and then this plot point, I'm gonna get really sick of this series really quickly and probably DNF the series. But for now I'm still enjoying it. It's very sweet. It's a warm hug of a book. Emily's kind of like grumpy and Wendell's kind of the sunshine character, which is always fun to have the grumpy sunshine being the girl is grumpy and the guy is the sunshine. Um, and she's not great with people. I, I like her a lot. But she's definitely not for everybody. But I think I think I'm just gonna flat out say if you like the first book and you just want a retelling of the first book, you're gonna really like this book. It's the same story. This is the last of my unwrapped as far as the series continuation goes because uh, I, I don't have I don't have any more to unwrap. I'm done. I mean I could technically wrap up more but we're moving on. The rest of the month I'm going to spend finishing off books from my Dungeon of Books TBR that I haven't managed to get around to and next week is going to be my February TBR so look forward to that I guess and I will see you for that. Thank you for being here on my journey finishing all of these series continuations. Bye!